Would you like to go blind instantly, inhale hydrogen chloride, or potentially burn your house down? No? Well, these are just some of the risks associated with a huge range of cheap laser cutters flooding the market right now. I've been using laser cutters for years to make awesome things, but the sheer disregard for safety displayed in these products is so bad that I felt it was time to make a video about it. Okay, so first things first, who am I and why am I remotely qualified to discuss this topic? Well, I've been using laser cutters to make all kinds of projects since the early years of my industrial design degree at the University of Technology, Sydney. At the time, UTS had a dedicated technician to run the lasers, but I eventually did become buddy-buddy enough with the engineering department to use one of their very nice Versa lasers, where I used it to make all kinds of robotics projects. After that, I got a part-time job at a laser cutting design firm, where we made all sorts of on-demand products, and only after that did 3D printing become accessible enough that I made the jump. Having said all that, anything you do, you do so at your own risk. I'm just here to share my views and concerns on what I feel is an incredibly negligent practice. I'm not responsible for what you buy, or how you use it. But here's the thing, laser cutters are incredibly handy tools and here on Maker's Muse, it's my aim to empower your creativity through technology, which laser cutters can absolutely do. They can be used to quickly etch, cut and prototype from all kinds of sheet material and are a fantastic companion technology to 3D printing. And I use mine all the time for projects on the channel. However, in all my years of working with laser cutters, I have never and will never use a laser cutter like this. And this is why. When it comes to laser cutting, there are four main dangers to be aware of. Number one is laser radiation. Obviously, it's right in the name. The lasers used by the systems are powerful enough to cut right through woods and plastics, so they're definitely powerful enough to blind you in an instant if something goes wrong. There are three different kinds of lasers you'll encounter, solid state, fiber, and CO2. Much of my experience has been with CO2 lasers, which use this huge glass, or if you're lucky, metal laser tube to generate infrared light at a wavelength of 10,640 nanometers, which is readily absorbed by a wide variety of materials. It's also invisible to the naked eye, and because the tube is so huge, the only way of directing that laser to the cutting surface is with a series of reflective mirrors and focusing lenses. Traditionally, all of the hobby laser cutters used CO2 laser tubes and they almost universally came with some sort of enclosure that would absorb any stray laser radiation in the case of a mirror misalignment or if you tried cutting a super reflective material. But it's solid state, otherwise known as diode lasers, which are becoming increasingly popular and ever more powerful, strapped to an open air gantry design that fills me with the utmost terror. You see, unlike 3D printing, which melts the plastic to print with it, laser cutters burn away material to either cut out parts or engrave an image by scanning across an image line by line. If it just melted the material, it'd be like that old wire through an ice cube trick. The parts wouldn't actually be cut out, they'd stay fused together. A laser cutter by design must burn away material to etch patterns or cut out parts. And the laser power required to do this is no joke. There's also metal laser cutters and YAG lasers that use a Galvo setup to rapidly mark materials, but they're beyond the scope of this video. Different laser technologies employ different wavelengths, which means that some materials will absorb the laser radiation better than others. For example, diode lasers can't cut clear acrylic, but CO2 lasers can but they can all blind you if something goes wrong. And again, that's why I always assumed hobby laser cutters needed an enclosure with a window that would absorb any errand stray laser radiation. But no, these open air units simply come with a pair of laser glasses, which you assume are spec to absorb the correct wavelength. But even if they are, will you remember to wear them? And what about your family, your friends, or your pets? Are they gonna be safe from stray laser radiation? Personally, I'd never take that risk. Number two, high voltage. Again, this depends on the technology, but did you know that CO2 lasers need upwards of 25 kilovolts to fire? That is some serious voltage and the power supplies used have enough amps backing them up to be deadly. I have a friend whose cheap CO2 laser cutter was arcing voltage from the laser tube to the metal frame, which thankfully was grounded, but that's honestly terrifying. Diode laser cutters tend to operate at a much safer 12 to 24 volt DC, with the diode itself needing much less than that. But just like cheap 3D printers, I would be cautious of poorly shielded mains wires, incorrectly spec connectors, and mains cables just without any grounding at all. And now we're coming to the dangers that concern me the most. 
fumes and fire. Again, laser cutters burn material to cut it and burning materials releases particulates and gases in the form of smoke. To manage this on my laser cutter, I have this huge fan forced HEPA filter with an activated charcoal layer that is then picked up by a vent fan that is then dumped outside. The cheap laser cutters that I'm getting pushed now into my inbox every single day for review though, they have nothing. To me, the most scary thing about smoke from laser cutters is that you don't really know if it's dangerous or not. Even if you do your research, you could very easily fill your room with toxic fumes in an instant. So let me just walk you through a few materials to give you an idea of what you're up against. So what I have in front of me is a range of materials you may consider cutting or engraving on your laser cutter. And some of these cut really well, some of them engrave, but they don't cut. And some of these are downright toxic to laser cut at all. And the really scary thing is sometimes it's very, very difficult to know if something is safe to laser cut or not at all. And this is even with correct fume uh, extraction in place. So we'll start with natural materials. So the general rule of thumb is if it's a natural material that you can burn in a campfire or fireplace without worrying, then it's probably safe to laser cut. But keep in mind, it'll still generate smoke, it'll still generate carbon monoxide, and it still needs adequate ventilation. So whatever you choose to cut in your machine, keep in mind that even if it's a natural material, you still need that ventilation in place. And this is just my opinion based on my experience with laser cutters over the years. Do your own research and whatever you choose to cut is at your own risk. So obviously paper will laser cut incredibly easy, uh, but it can catch fire. But what about cardboard? Well, card's interesting. Um, thin card cuts really well, but Corrugated cardboard can be quite challenging because it's quite thick and that means getting the laser focus dialed in can be quite difficult to make it cut all the way through and I've seen some people they'll just slow the machine down to try to cut all the way through in one pass and uh, yeah that can cause it to catch fire. So if you're cutting thick corrugated cardboard maybe consider setting your laser focus point a little bit lower so it can pass all the way through. Uh, cleanly, but yeah, generally cardboard paper works fine. But then what about wood? Wood's a natural product, right? You should be able to cut that safely. Well, yes and no. If you're cutting just pure wood, like this piece of pine here, that's not treated in any way, then yeah, it's literally just like burning it and the byproducts will just be wood smoke. But then you come to materials like plywoods. So this is laser ply. It's designed specifically for laser cutters and it's laminated with a glue that in theory, supposedly is safe to laser cut. But how about this material? This is plywood as well, but it's structural plywood. And the glue used to bond the layers together is formaldehyde based, which is a very good strong glue for structural purposes, but you don't want to be burning anything that's formaldehyde based. And just to let you know, I have tried laser cutting this again with my full extraction system and it laser cuts really badly as well. So if you have plywood that's cutting really, really badly, then it's probably not safe to cut anyway. Um, and I would consider getting some proper plywood that's designed and spec for laser cutting that won't be formaldehyde based. But it can be even harder to tell than that. This is MDF, which is medium density fiber board. And it does laser cut okay, but often leaves this nasty yellowish sticky residue. And that's probably what's the binder that's used to produce this sheet. MDF can have formaldehyde in it as well. But it depends where you're from and depends what grade it is. In Australia, I think most of it has, it has formaldehyde in it, but overseas it's restricted and there's low formaldehyde or no formaldehyde grades in MDF that are probably much safer to cut because it does cut quite cleanly. But again, it can be really hard to tell, even if you are doing your research, to be aware of the fact that it might not be safe to laser cut. But there's no bigger case of mistaken identity than leather. And this is where I'm really concerned because all these laser cutting companies list leather as material you can laser cut and laser etch, which you can, but it depends on the leather. So here I have a huge range of different materials and I'm not a leather expert, but we have materials like this, which is natural leather. It's, I believe, veggie tanned. I'm not sure if it's rawhide, but basically this is the most natural kind of leather you can basically get. Uh, it does laser cut fine and it laser etches fine as well. It stinks to high heaven because you're essentially cutting skin, but it does indeed laser cut and etch. This is sole leather. It's basically the same thing, but compressed. Good luck cutting that, but you can etch it totally fine if you want to get market and it's no problem at all. Then there's materials like this. Um, this is chrome tanned using chromium salt. It's not a natural process. Chromium is 
incredibly horrible to the environment. But does that mean this is safe or unsafe to laser cut, Renetch? I'm actually not sure. I don't know if chrome tanned leather is safe to cut, but I see a lot of people doing it. But this isn't, but believe it or not, this isn't the biggest concern here. This is. This isn't real leather at all. This is fake leather. And it's made with PVC plastic. PVC or polyvinyl chloride has chlorine in it. And that's a really big problem because if you burn anything with chlorine in it, it will release hydrogen chloride gas. And what that gas does is it will combine with moisture in the air to create hydrochloric acid. And yeah, if you breathe it in, you have moisture in your lungs, so it will turn into acid in your lungs. It's a big thing about fires, how people usually die in fires from the smoke inhalation, not the fire itself. It's generally because of PVC burning. So this material is so dangerous, you should never ever cut it. But it's like leather, right? You might mistake it as real leather. You might have a product that looks like it's got leather on it and you might try to cut it. This is my concern here. It's really hard to tell what materials are safe or unsafe. Because more often than not, there won't be a label. It might be real leather, it might be PVC leather, it might be polyurethane leather. You make fake leather out of uh, polyurethane as well. I wouldn't dare cut that either because it has its own nasty byproducts that could be produced when it's burnt. Acrylic is a really common material to laser cut and laser etch. And that's for a good reason. It actually cuts really, really cleanly and is supposedly safe to laser cut. However, in my experience, it has the most horrific smell. It makes this really acrid smell. Even with a full filter and extraction system, I can still smell it. It's really, really not pleasant. But it does laser cut very cleanly, it etches very nicely, and leaves this nice flame-polished edge. But the issue with acrylic is it's very brittle. For example, it's incredibly brittle. So it's useful for projects, but only to a degree. It's not as durable as many other plastics. So you might be tempted to use a tougher plastic such as this. This is polycarbonate. And although I've seen this cut in industrial settings, it laser cuts incredibly poorly. It has a yellowed edge, it gets sort of charring, it's not very nice. I wouldn't recommend cutting it. And the fumes from this, I am sure, are not very good for you. Again, I don't really know, but it doesn't laser cut well, but it's very tough. So it's really, really annoying that you can't laser cut this, but you can laser cut acrylic. This is high impact polystyrene. It laser cuts quite decently, a little bit melty, not too bad. Is it safe to cut? Again, one of those ones I don't know. This is EVA foam. It actually laser cuts really, really easily and etches, but it's another material where I'm not sure if it's dangerous or not to cut. A lot of people online think it has chlorine in it. I don't think it does, but I could be wrong. But it does laser cut very easily and it's material that I often use. However, again, I use full extraction with filtering, so I feel like I'm mitigating any possible risk of laser cutting this material. And this is G10. You may be familiar with this, this material because I've been using it on my 3D printer print beds. But this is definitely material you shouldn't laser cut because not only is the epoxy that's used to create it a thermoset material, it burns instead of melting again, but it has fiberglass in it. It's got glass strands in it, which means the laser cannot cut it. So do not try to laser cut G10 material or anything with fiberglass in it because not only will it not work, but it's probably gonna cause a huge amount of nasty fumes as well. And that goes for carbon fiber as well. You're not gonna get through those carbon uh, strands in there. It's not going to laser cut. It's not going to work. However, having said all that, did you know you can laser cut glass? Yeah, it doesn't cut it, but you can etch it really easily, especially with a CO2 laser. It actually creates a really nice frosted etch. And that won't produce any fumes as such, but it produces microscopic glass powder, which I don't really want to breathe in. So you would also have to mitigate that with a really good extraction system and a way to keep that dust down so you don't breathe it in. On a hobby laser system, there's no way you're gonna be cutting metal, but you can etch it. Now, if you direct etch onto like stainless steel, for example, with a hobby laser cutter, you might get a slight discoloration, but that's about it. To get a good etch on stainless steel or other materials, you need a material called Surmark or similar. And what that does is it creates a coating where the laser will hit that coating and essentially turn it into a really, really hard mark on the surface. Like, I think it turns into a type of ceramic. I don't know. It's an incredible material that's very expensive, and Joel actually recently covered it in a video here with Neil Patrick Harris, where they used it to etch some brass. So you can do it on a hobby laser using that material, but don't expect to directly mark 
uh, metal very easily with a hobby laser. It doesn't work too well, but what does work well if you want to try it is by painting the surface and then etching it back like with this LTT bottle. They have powder coated it. You can etch powder coat and it will leave a really clean etch exposing the bare metal underneath. And you can do that if you want to get a nice etch on a metal surface as well. So yeah, usually at this stage of the video, I would say if in doubt, consult the manufacturer for what's safe and what isn't, but these companies aren't even telling anyone what's safe and what isn't, and they're not providing the materials either beyond a small sample you get with the machine. And that's a big problem. So at a minimum, I would never run a laser without adequate ventilation and a enclosure, but even that won't prevent your laser from catching fire. I've seen it happen and it can happen fast. I'll be honest with you guys, it does take a lot to set material on fire with a laser cutter, but it can absolutely happen. And all it takes is a lapse in attention to spiral out of control. In my experience, fires occur due to user error more often than not. For example, you can accidentally send layered DXFs or SVGs with lines on top of each other, which the laser will just blindly follow, cutting the same path again and again and again, which can easily result in a fire. I actually just did that recently on my own laser, but because I saw it was cutting the same path again, I caught it and I killed the job. And this sort of thing would happen quite a lot at uni where the architectural students had to make contour models using stacked plywood and they'd send DXF files exported from Rhino to the laser guys. These files would have several lines nested on top of each other, which actually did cause a fire once because the laser was just repeatedly blasting the wood till it singed and caught fire. Using too much power and too little speed or an out of focus laser can also cause materials to catch and pro tip, don't try cutting thick plywood in one single pass by maxing out its power and slowing down speed because the softer pine in the middle layers can actually catch like an incense stick and slowly start burning through the entire sheet. Yeah, that was a fun day. Look, no technology is perfect, but as long as the manufacturer has managed safety risks, standards are conformed to, and the user is adequately trained and informed, I say go for it. But that's not what these companies are doing. It's actually quite frankly disgusting. I search product pages and manuals for information regarding material safety, fume extraction and fire risk. And the information was borderline at best or just missing entirely at worst. Laser cutters can absolutely be run safely. Check out this video I came across by the ever level headed Joe, the 3D printing professor. And if you think the technology will benefit you then do your research, buy from a reputable company, and figure out a way of doing it safely. And that's mostly why I've only ever reviewed two lasers on this channel, because they're the two that have come across my table that I felt was safe enough to actually make videos on. Because the other stuff that's coming to my inbox right now is just not. Because here's the thing, I've already been quoted in an article where a family tragically lost their son to a fire caused by a faulty 3D printer. That same company sent me a printer that did go into thermal runaway during the review and then they tried to pressure me to remove the video. I don't want to be quoted in another tragedy. So thanks so much for watching, stay safe and happy making. Bye.